good morning here i am in the shed at the allotment it's a beautiful day in the middle of march i've just heard my first skylark of the year and seen it as well chirping away oh how lovely the rhubarb has just broken the ground as well um so that's starting to grow today i'm actually going to put some seeds in the ground first seeds of the year apart from the sea potatoes i haven't even got any in the greenhouse yet but I just thought I'll pop some in up here um, and they'll grow, it'll be all right. Um, and I'm also gonna show you what we've been doing with the little pond up here. I'll take you out and give you a look. So this is the little pond that we put in just over a year ago. The intention is to get um, frogs in the pond that'll go on and eat the slugs in the plot. Not sure that it's done anything so far, but um, earlier this week, a couple of days ago, we've got a big pond in the back garden and we've got masses of frog spawn in there now. Oh, just over the last week, it's all been laid by the frogs. So Kenny got a load of frog spawn in a couple of buckets and came up here with it and put it into the pond here. And I can just see it here now, sitting on the top. So hopefully when the time comes, well, the, We'll get tadpoles and then frogs. I don't know how long it'll take for them to make any effect on the garden in terms of slug population, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, it's coming along quite nicely, this pond. We just threw it together. There's no pump or anything. It just sits there. So I wasn't sure if it would work. Um, I just took some uh, of the pond foliage and what have you from the pond in the back garden and just threw it in and it's coming along just fine. So that was what we did earlier in the week. Also, I don't know whether you saw one of our previous videos when we have a rat in our compost heap we've been trying to get rid of and every time we dig the compost heap out, it just runs out this way and into the shed, under the shed. Anyway, Kenny gave that a go as well a couple of days ago, dug it all out again. Because the last time we dug it out, there was um, a visible nest there. No, no baby rats, thank goodness, but like paper and stuff all bound up into a hole. Uh, he dug it out this time happily there was no um nest there nothing visible at all there's still the hole where the rat goes into but no no sign of the rat this time so hopefully fingers crossed it's gone the last thing i want is to get a little nest of rats breeding in my compost I, I don't mind one little rat so much but if it's a nest of them breeding that's not very nice is it so that was what kenny got up to a couple of days ago okay this border here is the border I am going to put my little seeds in right now. My plan is with this border is to put tomatoes in it. Then when the time comes, it's a nice big open border. I had them up against this fence last year, but apparently that's not a good idea because of tomatoes um susceptibility to blight and molds and stuff so you need to keep them well ventilated in a nice airy spot so i'm going to put them into this border this year so that the air can get right around them uh, i am a bit worried that they're going to get blown over here because it's a quite exposed site i'll see if i can show you we're halfway up a hill and way over that way i don't think you can tell it just levels right down all the way over there for miles and the wind whistles up there. But despite that, I figure if I stake them really, really well and uh, we'll just give it a try and hope for the best. I did really well with the tomatoes last year, so I'm hoping for another bumper crop this year. We'll see. However, before I plant the tomatoes, because obviously that is quite a bit further down the line. I'm going to push in a few little bits and bobs in there to see how they get on. I've got some spinach, Amelia, uh, they will grow. Um, they'll be fine. So I'm just going to put them in rows along the side. I've got some salad onions, spring onions, white Lisbon. I've got some garlic chives. I think I'll put them elsewhere. And I've got some purple spring onions, Lilia they're called. I'm going to try them. I'm just going to put them, I think, probably in a row down either side. We'll see how we'll get on. It is just so exciting and wonderful to be getting my hands in the soil and seeds in the soil. I can't believe it's actually come round to this wonderful time of year again. There we go. I've got, I don't know, 20 or 30 spinach seeds. I'm just going to put them all in. I think they're from last year, so I want to get them used. 
I'm just going to push them in. I'm not, I haven't made a special border or anything like that. I'm just pushing them in. And I'm hoping to get some nice baby spinach quite early on. And then the plan is <coughs> maybe later in the year when I take this out I'll maybe put tall tomatoes in the middle and like bush tomatoes along the side maybe we'll see everything's up for discussion one thing I've got to remember to do is label what I plant because I'm terrible for forgetting what I've put in. I push things in in the spoon at the moment and then forget what's there and plant over it before they've sprouted. There we are, now I won't forget what I've got in there. Pull row. I'm not going to water them because it's going to rain tomorrow apparently. So this is the border on the other side. I'm just going to put, I'm just going to sprinkle these in quite um, not thinly. I found if I grew spring onions in clumps, last year they, they did really well and I, I was able to keep picking out the bigger ones and letting the um, the smaller ones grow on so I'm going to do that with these I put these salad and these white lisbons in first So this kind of garden isn't going to give you neat straight regimented rows um, it's just going to be clumps and patches and you know that I mean they're in basic rows aren't they but uh, there's going to be lots together uh, as I say it worked well last year so I'm hopeful for this year as well and the next lot are these purple spring onions Lilia they're called I'm just going to put them down the other side the truth is this little patch could do with a bit of a weed. I've got a dock leaf coming up there, a bit of grass. There you go, that'll do. that works so this big raised bed is where I've had my salad the last two years and I'm just going to do that again this year I'm going to try and be a bit more organized about it though because last year I had masses of lettuce put in and um, there's only so much lettuce you can eat and I actually bought um, at the back end of the year quite a few different types of salad leaves that you can eat which I want to try and just get much better at successional sowing this year which uh, I'm not really very good at you've got to be quite disciplined I think to do it haven't you I've bought golden purslane I've bought oh I can't remember now I'll have to dig them all out anyway my idea is just to have nice thin rows of each and keep on keep on re sowing if I can this is chives that I put in last year chives are a perennial 
and they didn't really come to that much last year didn't really harvest anything off them so i'm hoping this year these are gonna start and strengthen up and come on a bit and i'll get a bit more out of them and next to them in this little row here is i'm gonna put these garlic chives in i've never had garlic chives before uh, but presumably they'll just be garlicky and oniony i would think and they're perennial as well so once these are in I'll just leave these two rows all the time so we'll always have chives not that I've ever used chives much in my life I have to admit but um, when you start to grow your own food you definitely start to use what you can grow don't you as opposed to what's in the grocery aisle in Asda is that enough do you think a few more for good measure because I've got the seed So, we have got a little label. Where is this off the seed pack for these ones? If I put it, I've lost it. Never mind. I'll get them labelled, I'll have to label them spring onions as well. I've actually got a little notebook which I try and write on what I've planted where, which I must get back into the habit of doing because as I say otherwise, because I'm not an organised gardener, I just forget what I've done and I, when I come up I just plant as I see. I, I think Liz Zora called my type of garden an intuitive garden, which sounds a bit better than just being completely disorganised, doesn't it? So I think I'm an intuitive gardener which means I need to keep track, otherwise I haven't got a clue where I put away and I replant on top of things when I forget because you always think you're going to remember, don't you? And you never do. Anyway, I think that's all I'm going to do up here for today. I'm going to go back down home and I'll show you what Kenny is making for me in the back garden, which I'm going to be using in the next video, hopefully, all, if all goes to plan. Uh, exciting times when the greenhouse starts to get full of seeds. I'll see you back down the road in a minute. I'm in the back garden now and I just thought I'd show you this. Uh, my dad made this uh, last year and it was a cover for his strawberries because the blackbirds were eating them. Anyway, he hasn't got strawberries anymore so he gave it to me um, thinking I would make use of it. So what I'm going to get Kenny to do with it is he's going to put some legs on the bottom to raise it up to normal table height and I'm going to use it as a little potting table. I don't know whether you can see it's got like a kind of mesh, heavy duty mesh on the top. It would be ideal because I've been using the table on the little patio table to do me potting and then um, all the soil falls through all over the patio makes everything a mess and the, pat the patio gets all the, the compost in the cracks and then we'll get the weeds coming through. Um, so this is going to be ideal because I'm just going to sit it outside my greenhouse here on this patch of what's going to be it's my potato patch but I'll just work the legs between the plants and I'll be able to do all my potting on here, plant all the seeds and the compost can just all fall through it and I can just rub it through and it'll save us all that sweeping up and uh, tidying up afterwards. I'm pretty happy about it. So Kenny's just going to attach some scrap pieces of wood uh, at each corner and I'm sure that will work just fine. Right, so there we go, there's my table. Can you see how it's nice and 
that they call it hardware cloth in America. I don't know what we'll call it here. Anyway, it's a mesh with a hole that goes in. So I'm happy with that. That's just the right height. And next time you see us, the next video, I'm going to be using this and I'm going to be putting the seeds in, ready to go in the greenhouse. Uh, so I'm pretty excited for that. Okay, thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.